Hello, this is Georgina Rose, and welcome back to the Dot Darling YouTube channel. On this channel, we discuss magic, mysticism, religion, the occult, and everything on the fringes of esoterica. And I'm Georgina, I'm a Thelemite and a ceremonial magician, and I'm also a part-time center of pestilence. In this video, I'm going to be doing the second interview on this channel, and this is on a topic that I've been a little, I'll just say nervous to touch on, because I've said before that Thelema isn't satanic, Thelema and Satanism are not the same. And Thelema and Satanism are definitely not the same, but... I think when you're researching Thelema, a lot of people have that like nagging thought. They're like, is this Satanism? How does this relate to Satanism? Or people who are Satanist uh, hear about Crowley and they're like, how do I relate to that? Where does that fit into my picture? And so I wanted to bring on someone who is actually versed in both Satanism and Thelema. If you're not familiar in either what Satanism or Thelema is, I have videos on my Occult 101 series explaining both of those. So if you want a quick explainer, click into those watch those. They're about like 15 minutes long and then come back here. Uh, and I've brought on Lynn, who I am so excited to have on. So Lynn, can you sort of introduce yourself and say how you relate to this topic and let people know where to find you? Yeah, hey everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I go by Mavius Lynn or Lynn. I'm an artist practicing occultist, a Thelemite. I practice ceremonial magic. Um, I've been a practicing occultist for over a decade now. Uh, my story starts off actually with the Church of Satan um, and over the years has progressed to slight involvement with the Satanic Temple. Um, and then, of course, eventually. Um, through my studies and involvement in various occult communities, I came around to Thelema as well. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about uh, some of my favorite occult paradigms today. Thank you for coming on. I'm really excited to talk to you. So I think we got to start off with the foundation, the baseline, the sort of, you know, 101, 101 question. Uh, and that would be sort of what do you think? Do you think Thelema and Satanism are the same? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, it's sort of like saying, is Thelema the same as Wicca? Or is Thelema the same as eclectic witchcraft? No, they're, they're not the same. Um, but we do see a lineage. We sing, you know, the original founder of atheistic Satanism, or one of them, um, Anton LaVey, he borrowed a lot of elements from Thelema. And we see that throughout his works. But um, they're its own thing, right? Uh, so there is that lineage there. But, you know, I, I would not say they're the same. Perfect. I just wanted to clarify that because I know the like beginners, that's going to be their big question. But I think that you mentioned the lineage. So I think it gets a little more complex. So how do sort of in that historic context, the Lima and Satanism connect? Where do they first merge? Not like necessarily like their ideological connection, but like, where do they interact in a sort of broader historic sense? Yeah, um, so I would trace that back originally to actually Anton LaVey when he came out with some of the foundational texts, the Satanic Bible um, and things like that, the Satanic scriptures and so forth, where he drew heavily on or, you know, you could say he basically yanked Crowley's magical theory. Um, within that document of the Satanic Bible, you saw a strong emphasis on individuality, an emphasis on indulgence. Um, you know, talking about ritual as psychodrama, things like that. But essentially what uh, this gentleman, Anton LaVey, came along and, um, you know, popularized, I guess a lot of people would say, atheistic Satanism in particular. And he did that with sort of the strong backbone of Thelema throughout it. So what are some elements that sort of have stuck from Thelema into the Satanic paradigm? Yeah, um, so one of them, uh, and you see in LaVey's uh, Satanic Bible, he says, the God you may save may be yourself, which is a very strong concept in Thelema. We see this over and over again in the Gnostic Mass. Um, Crowley writes in the new comment for the Book of the Law, he says, the old definition of God takes new meaning for us, each one of us in the one God. Again, we see Crowley in Libra Oz, there is no God but man. Um, another concept we see in both camps. Um, the Satanic Bible talks about indulgence, not compulsion. In Libra Libre, we say strengthen and control the animal passions. Um, the Satanic Bible, again, yeah, I'm not going to go down a whole bunch of things, but I just want to throw some things out there for everyone to think about, uh, which is, the, and again, the Satanic Bible says Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. And again, at Thelema, we see Libra Libre. Um, we see... Um, 
a discipline of the emotions and the reason. So you're seeing a lot of almost one-to-one, um, I don't know, sharing of concepts and values. So what are the con- the sort of complementary question? What are the biggest differences? Because I think sort of the, the big thing that people go to is the atheism thing, because Thelema is not necessarily atheistic, but does it go further? How else do they vary? One thing you could say is Thelema is a complete system of mysticism, um, and it is a very heavily fleshed out religion. Um, with atheistic Satanism, we do have the Satanic Bible, we do have the Satanic scriptures, we have other fantastic writers, um, but it, it, you don't see the same depth um, developed over the time like you do with something like Thelema, right? And you don't have... Um, you know, what we would consider like class A documents, class B documents, and so forth. We just don't have that in Satanism, right? You have, you know, it's a, in Thelema, we have a prophet of the new Aeon, we have um, some dictated texts, you know. In Satanism, you just have some well-respected people uh, talking about theory and putting together a lot of stuff. So Satanism is sort of this cobbled together, um, its own animal uh, from this uh, fantastic, very vibrant character of Anton LaVey starting out. And um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say what LaVey did. Let me, let me back up a little bit. What LaVey did with magic in particular is in his mind, he wasn't creating something new so much as stripping down pre-existing systems of magic to something more simple and direct. So he would take, for example, an Enochian ritual and remove all the angels and replace them with Satan. Uh, And in his mind, this was all about ritual drama and the correspondences and stuff like that didn't matter. And he was simplifying it. So he would say, for example, or or I would say, I've heard other Satanists say, theistic Satanists, they say, well, I like Levian Satanism better because it's, it's, You know, all the Egyptoid stuff isn't in it. You don't have to worry so much about, you know, the correspondences and stuff like that. It's pared down to the real root ritual psychodrama, and it's more powerful this way. Um, But on the opposite end, you know, Thelema does have a little bit more depth and multiple meetings and um, a more fleshed out system of mysticism, I will say. I noticed within Thelema... There are, of course, sort of sub-schools of Thelema, if you really want to put it that way. Like, there's, you know, the the mainline Thelema, and then there's occasionally, like, the Typhonians. But I find with Satanism, from what I've observed as an outsider, because I'm not a Satanist, um, the Satanic community sort of has two camps. Um, and it seems to be, like, the sort of Randian, Levian, Church of Satan types, and then these very uh, progressive, uh, postmodern uh the satanic temple types. And so does that sort of, how does that manifest in the community or am I observing that sort of wrong as an outsider? Yeah, I think your observations are dead on. I think it's a fantastic distinction you're making. Um, Of course, there are some other fantastic groups to note, um, you know, like the Temple of Set and people, and and of course the theistic Satanists are doing their own thing. But among the atheistic Satanists, we do have those two groups. Um, And, you know, the Levian Satanists are more tar- obviously tied to the Church of Satan, Peter Gilmore, that sort of camp. And then emerging out of that came later the Satanic Temple, um, which are much more interested in social justice and are more social justice oriented. So what does that mean, you know, in the context of talking about Thelema? But basically, Anton LaVey, he, you know, stripped down Thelema. And I would argue when he stripped down Thelema, he took out the concept of agape. Um, and then you move forward in time to the Satanic Temple, which with their work on social justice and other things, arguably put back in the concept of agape. Um, I mentioned this a second ago, but Anton LaVey was very heavily inspired by political philosopher Anne Rand, who is, I'll just say, polarizing. Um, and I think some people, especially people who are Rand fans who don't know about the occult, are always very sort of surprised by this, to say the least. So how does Ayn Rand's ideas sort of play into the satanic community? Yeah, uh, yeah, she's definitely a polarizing figure. uh, And you'll find Satanists of actually both camps, um, the social justice ones and more conservative Church of Satan ones, who both like her and hate her. Um, But I would argue that uh, you can find echoes and influences of her work within within, uh, LaVey's writing. Uh, That being said, if you move forward in time, uh, specifically in the Church of Satan, 
you will find people, even higher ups in the Church of Satan. Uh, I won't name names. I don't want to cause too much of a stir. Uh, but let's just say a former magister of the Church of Satan uh, was very vocally, very vocally hated Anne Rand, basically, uh, very much against her. And and you will see a good diversity of people of different political backgrounds within the Church of Satan, although that may be changing over time. It's been a while since I've been in that crowd. Um but that's the general idea is to have a diversity of opinions. And, and just because LeVay, this is, this is an important side note, just because LeVay, you know, was deeply influenced by Anne Rand and really liked her work and so on and so forth, um, doesn't mean someone who is an atheistic Satanist likes her or, or has to like her, right? And we're seeing that same analogous concept in Thelema, whereas, you know, you can like a lot of what Crowley did, but you don't have to like anything. Uh, you know, for a while, Crowley was doing some pretty wild stuff and engaging with a lot of different opinions. Uh, just because Ayn Rand was there and, you know, LeVay, you know, put her in to some of his ideas doesn't mean you have to engage with Ayn Rand. So now I think we should discuss sort of the interaction of the communities. You mentioned to, I've seen you talk about this on social media, how you've been really sort of trying to get Satanists to read Crowley and engage with Thelema a bit. So why should they, and what do Satanists think about Thelema? How do they sort of view the Thelema sphere? Yeah, um, that that is, th- thank you so much for bringing that up. I, I, I'm i always doing that. I, I sort of sometimes feel like I have feet in both worlds, the Satanists and the Thelemites, and I'm always trying to get Thelemites to read Crowley. Um, uh, and so I guess general opinions uh, from my perspective on how everyone views everything. Um, I think it's a mixed bag. I think in general, I would say Satanists view uh, the works of Aleister Crowley favorably in this modern age. Um, you will get the occasional, oh, you guys are kind of weird as Thelemites or, you know, something like that. But I think that that's not unique to Satanists. I think it's a general attitude some people have uh you know because Crowley was known to say inflammatory things in the media and kind of you know get it out there so if you haven't taken the time to study Crowley uh or you know look into that then you may you know accidentally believe some of it you know um but uh what do Satanists in particular to answer that part of the question have to get from studying Crowley wow so much um I will say, uh, you know, some of his writings are a bit challenging, but quite frankly, it's worth the challenge. Um, He has such a beautifully rich system of mysticism, philosophy. Um, You know, if you think about your lineage, what LaVey originally did by paring things down and oversimplifying, I wouldn't say over, excuse me, I'll just say simplifying things. um, He left out so much. He left out beautiful concepts ideas and um i think it i think it would be worth your while as a satanist to go back revisit crowley and decide for yourself if you like what levee did and you you can't have an opinion unless you know what he took out you know you, and i think it would be valuable to have that perspective i appreciate that also yes crowley i think one of the best words that i've heard to describe him and i think wikipedia used this term was social provocateur beyond sort of creating the religion of thaliba and having all these you know these beautiful rituals he was a troll he was really trying to push the boundaries of what was believed and what was possible. So another thing that I wanted to bring up, and this sort of does relate to the philosophies of Satanism and Thelema. One thing when I was thinking about how to compare the two systems was Nietzsche, um, as that sort of, I feel like, intersects with both spheres. How do you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, Nietzsche was a big influence on LeVay, uh, also Crowley. Nietzsche is currently um, one of the saints in the EGC or Ecclesiastica Gnostica Catholica, and um, that is the ecclesiastical arm of the OTO. So Nietzsche plays a role in both camps and um, definitely worth looking into. So what is the biggest misconception you see Thelemites having about Satanist? Yeah, um, I guess the biggest misconception is (laughs) um, that they're all edgelords and trying to shock and awe people. When I would say a lot of 
people who are involved with atheistic Satanism come to it from a similar perspective as a lot of occult paradigms. They're working on themselves. They're trying to find uh, their place in the world. They're trying to find balance and equilibrium and, and their aspirations are genuine. They're not just trying to shock their parents. Um, and uh, despite the name, I think there is um, some value to it for certain people. Beautifully put. I think that that is a very common position from Thelemites and one that I did used to hold personally until I met people like you and I was like, wait, it's completely not true. And there are, let's be real, some edgelords who like get into Thelema and do the same thing. Edgelordism is not something that is unique to one faith. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about is because Satanism, as we know, is atheistic, or the Satanism that we're talking about, I, I mentioned in my Satanism video forever ago, there are other forms of Satanism that exist, but they're very different, so we're not covering them here, because it's a whole different can of worms. Um, most Thelemites are definitely not atheist, um, I would say. So how do you feel like atheism intersects with magic? Because I think that's something that from the Thelemic, or even the broader Western esoteric camp, is something that seems a little, you know, surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the this is the fun part, right? This is where it gets a little weird. This is where you get you get. Uh, I guess everyone's gonna get a little bit of my weird perspective on this. Which, um, so for, for me personally, and I, I and it, I can't separate this from it being personal. Um, but for me, Thelema is my religion. It's a, it, it philosophy. It is is my core belief system. Um, and you know, before I tack on uh, atheistic Satanism, we have to, or at least I reflect on. Same with my deity work. Same with everything else I pursue. To, you ask yourself, to what end are you doing it? Um, and Crowley states in Magic and Theory and Practice, uh, the great work is the raising of the whole man in perfect balance to the power of infinity. Um, and so when you go to the other uh, Class B document, Libra Astarte, it's all about deity work. And there it states... Uh, you should be pursuing deity work to balance yourself out. So I'm, I'm not talking about deity work here, of course, but but I am saying there is this this thread throughout the Lima that your magical work or your work on yourself more generally should be to keep yourself in balance. And so for me, atheistic Satanism is one of these paradigms with a system of tools uh, along with it, you know, through satanic scriptures and stuff uh, that can be approached in a way that balances your nature. So in, in my case, or perhaps other people's cases, they could have a more meek nature, they could lack self-confidence, um, they could be more timid, they could, you know, there's a, there's a wide range of things we could be lacking in our personalities, or perhaps just how we navigate the world and ourselves. Um, a big one is, of course, that uh, a lack of ego, really. Uh, if you're someone who lacks that, um, you could, yeah, you could approach it with a, a number of different tools, but a, certainly a valid one is atheistic Satanism. You can easily graft those practices into your other practices um, to sort of balance yourself out. And I have noticed, yeah, there are some fantastic benefits um, to incorporating some of those. And we talk a lot about LaVey, but let me just throw, you know, uh, Shiva Honey's work out there as well. She's a, a wonderful um, uh, person in the Satanic Temple who does a lot of, you know, makes these small rituals. She has a tarot deck she made, you know, she has a lot of fantastic things. And um, I don't find that, her work or really any of the other atheistic Satanist stuff I've done conflicts with my uh, non-atheistic stuff. So why did you feel drawn? Because I know you were a Satanist first. What drew you to Thelema from Satanism? Yeah, I mean, ultimately Crowley. So I guess my story is a weird one because I didn't end up on Satanism in, on purpose. <laughs> um, it was an accident. Um but I, I basically ended up being pigeonholed with uh, reading a ton of philosophy in middle school and high school to the point where I was thirsty for so much more. And I was online with my little blog and the people I connected with who were also deeply interested in philosophy and in particular Frederick Nietzsche um, were people at the Church of Satan. And so I made a lot of fantastic friends through my blog and, um, you know, they helped me get in contact with resources because of course when you're not in college it it's a lot harder to get a hold of books and articles and stuff like that so 
yeah, I made friends with them. And so I already had these preformed opinions about how I saw the world and approached, you know, philosophy. And it was at that point that I finally read LeVay and said, oh, I guess I technically fall under his definition of Satanist. Okay, fine. I, I begrudgingly accepted that label. And um, it was in the Church of Satan as I was reading different things that um, a, a dear friend of mine uh, was like, uh, absolutely loved Aleister Crowley. He also, uh, although being high up in the Church of Satan, was previously in the OTO, so on and so forth, introduced me to Crowley. Uh, and so for the longest time, I was just simply a Crowley fanboy. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't until I begrudgingly accepted the label Thelemite, because I was like, you know, what, what are you doing? Uh, you, sh you should accept the label of that which you are. Um, so I, I eventually ended up with that label too. What advice would you have for anyone who's either looking into Satanism or Thelema? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, again, <laughs> well, um, I would say Thelema. Um, you may find Aleister Crowley difficult to read off the bat. I know a lot of people tell you know, people are brand new. Oh, read the book of the law. Read the book of the law. Well, quite frankly, it's a dictated text. It's going to be weird when you first read it. Uh, don't let that stress you out. I would approach people like the writings of David Shoemaker and Living Thelema, uh, Law and Milo Duquette. They have some fantastic texts that are much easier to approach to see if that's something that resonates with you and a path you want to go down. And then if you're like, yes, this is good, uh, then maybe approach something like Magic and Theory and Practice. I know uh, Georgina has absolutely amazing recommendations, so it's nothing y'all haven't heard already. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, I'm just really repeating that. Um, but uh, you know, Satanists, uh, y'all are going to get some different advice from me, which is don't start with Anton LaVey. And this is always a shocking thing. People are like, well, I could just read this, the Satanic Bible. I'm like, no, don't. Please don't. Instead, go ahead and read some background on Nietzsche. If you can stomach it, read Nietzsche himself. Um, go ahead and read, you know, um, <laughs> read Anne Rand. Make up your own opinion about her. Um, Read things that influence LaVey. In fact, go ahead, if you're ready for it, read Magic and Theory and Practice by Aleister Crowley. Make up your own thoughts about magic, uh, philosophy, politics, all this thing, and then read LaVey. Because ultimately, LaVey is speaking to people who already agree with him. It's not like a text you read and then try to aspire to be. He's speaking to people who have the same worldview, so... I guess uh, to avoid tainting your own perspective, uh, make your own perspective first. Thank you. So what books or material, what do you recommend like for people to go and springboard off this video and look at? Okay, uh, I'm gonna plug David Shoemaker, uh, Living Thelema. I'm gonna plug um, Lon Milo Duquette, really anything he's written. Um, of course, uh, I'm going to. If you're interested in Crowley, I'm gonna I'm gonna also plug Per Durabo by Richard Kaczynski, um, which is a fantastic Crowley uh, biography, one of the best out there. It is even, so you're not gonna get um, an intense view one way or the other about Crowley from that biography. It's really good, well researched, also. And um, for Satanism, I'm gonna go ahead and. Um, and plug something people don't think of, which is female Satanists in the community. So I'm going to plug Shiva Honey. Uh, she's written a bunch of fantastic things, a couple of books. Um, and then I'm also going to plug um, The Happy Satanist. It's also another fantastic book to look up. Thank you. So those were sort of my my big questions I had for you. Thank you so, so much for coming on. This is a subject I have wanted to brace for a while, and I thought bringing on someone like you would be the perfect thing to do. And I love your work. I think you do really great stuff. And it makes me so happy seeing other women in Thelema discussing these ideas on the internet. Um, so where is your corner of the internet? Where can my people find you and support you and learn more about what you have to say? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I just wanted to say it was such a joy and pleasure to collaborate with you on this. Of course, I always love the content you make and uh, it's such a joy to support you and be on this channel. Uh, but to find me, uh, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. Um, yeah. And I'm on all of those platforms as Mavius Lynn.
Perfect. Uh, if you want to find me, I'm Georgina Roser dot darling. You already know I have a YouTube channel, but you can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, Telegram. You can also watch these videos on Odyssey if you have strong feelings about that. And you can also find me on Vero. I posted on Vero like two times, but allegedly I'm going to start posting there at some point. Uh, if you want to support me and keep these videos coming, keep them being made. Uh, also comment if you like more interviews. It's only the second interview I've done. I've been wondering if you guys like the format. I think it's really nice to elevate, elevate Thalamic voices and I want to know your thoughts. Um, support me on Patreon. You get all the videos about a week early, give or take a few days. Um, you get, I do an extra video every single month, ritual guides and other things for higher tiers. I also host the podcast Magnolias and Magic, everywhere podcasts can be found. That is an esoteric commentary podcast, less educational and more focused on community issues and discussion. So if you want a different flavor, that's another thing I do. Thank you so, so much for watching uh, and continuing to view the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you're subscribed for 93 days, you will meet your holy guardian angel. Um, that is definitely how that works. Uh, the Better Business Bureau, don't send them my information. Uh, I promise it is legitimate. And if you do that, you do the like, comment, subscribe, you get the holy guardian angel. And you never have to read a long book by Crowley or Nietzsche again. All right. <laughs> Thank you for watching and have a lovely day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are.